Before I read the a scripture that's in your song sheet, I'm going to read another scripture from Genesis chapter 2 into chapter 3. The Lord God took Adam and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded Adam, you may freely eat of every tree in the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? <laughs> that serpent. Uh, the woman said to the serpent, no, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were open. And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. Now, from the Gospel of Matthew. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tested by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterward he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, again it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world word and or to him all these things i will do to you if you will fall down and worship me then jesus said to him away with him then the devil left him and suddenly angels came and waited on him word of god word of life thanks be to god Twitter or the BBC, the ads on late night television, the wind as she blows, the echo of children playing, the quiet of snow, the ice bucket challenge, the phone when it rings, your pastor, your mother, your doctor, your gut, the tension in your shoulders, the restaurant singing happy birthday, audiobooks, TED Talks, the rhythm of the music, the coffee drip in the morning, the, your therapist, the wisdom of the Enneagram, our favorite, uh, the way your heart comes alive when you're being creative, the man on the corner asking for change, the kid on the subway selling chocolate, the labels on the makeup bottle that promise timeless beauty. The magazines that tell you you need timeless beauty, astrology, the Dow Jones, the hiss of the radiator, the pitter patter of little feet, financial advisors, the top 40 pop, the top 40 country, the New York Times, the rumor mill, the book of Psalms, your sense of self, Jesus, when he says, I am with you always. There are so many voices and people and things crying out for our attention, just hearing even that short list as a poem from Reverend Sarah Speed is exhausting. Never mind the lives we live and the lists we could each create for ourselves. 
We are pulled in a million different directions, many of which are neither good nor bad. They just are. And we each have a million different priorities that are often impossible to sort out because there's just no one right way to do it. But we got to figure it out. Which is why when I hear the question that we have for today, who will you listen to? I, on the one hand, want to like curl up in a ball and say, I don't know, that's why I'm here. <laughs> and on the other hand, I want to like breathe a sigh of relief and say, oh God, just tell me who, <laughs> please just give me a direction and I will go, I promise. It's the weight of having to sift through all the muck of hearing all the different voices and trying to discern whether or not they are worth listening to that gets exhausting. We long for the kind of certainty that comes from knowing what is right from wrong, good from bad, because we think if I just knew that would make it so much easier, right? And maybe because I had this question in mind as I read the Genesis story for the, today this week, it struck me that it is that sort of longing for wanting things to be clearer, wanting things to be easier, that is at the heart of what is happening rather than the misogynistic crap you've heard before, right? Which if you need to unpack that more, let's find coffee and unpack it then. But, but when we look at what is really happening, the very first time humans are tempted to listen to someone other than God, the temptation is the seed of desire to be like God, to know the difference between good and evil, to be wise without having lived experience, to just be handed it. The story of Adam and Eve is less about their giving in to the voice of another and more about their desire for certainty after first feeling conflicted. Wait a minute, God said one thing, this serpent kid said another, I don't know what to do. Can I just eat a fruit and have it tell me? It's less about the fall of humanity and more about the fear of humanity to live in conflict and doubt. And it struck me that maybe that is a more relatable story than what we've heard throughout our lives, maybe more liberatory for more of us. I wonder if we can rescue the narrative from shame of sin, of right and wrong, good or bad dichotomy that we humans love to play into, that maybe it allows us to be more honest about how we spend so much of our lives seeking those voices that affirm our preconceived notions. Those voices that say, yeah, you're right. Those people are wrong. Don't pay attention to them. When what we should be doing is embracing the questions we have and learning to be okay in the uncertainty that they create. Maybe that's why this is such an important question to start this season of Lent with. Who will you listen to is less about finding the right answer and more about being mindful of not jumping to the easy answers or conclusions. Which sounds easier said than done. <laughs> Because when we are so jam-packed with voices and stuff and noise, it is hard to discern what are the ones worth listening to and what, who will hold us and encourage us to be more complex, who is just offering easy answers. Part of the gift of Lent is it's a time where for centuries, Christians have used it to practice creating more space for God's voice to speak more quiet time for discernment. I personally like the term Lenten practice rather than Lenten discipline or giving something up, right? Those sound more punitive, more um, prescriptive rather than 
permissive, more certain about the outcome. Like, right, if I go through this journey, I will end up X amount better by the end of 40 days, right? It's like a 40 days to better you. Did anyone see that's the, the Chiron they used when Mark Wahlberg was talking about Lent? And like, Mark Wahlberg was try more but i think rather it is about practice about hearing the invitation to seeking and wonder so if you haven't decided what your specific practice might be this one it's not too late we have um devotionals we have things you can do we have a spotify playlist i can send you you can come to the book group on tuesday but it could be anything that helps you sort through all that is swirling around in your mind and in your soul and in your life and find some way to hold what is meaningful and complex rather than grasping on for easy answers. And I think modeling that sort of space, modeling that sort of discernment is part of the reason why the Lenten season always starts with this journey of Jesus in the wilderness being tempted by the devil. Also, it's 40 days he spends there in the early church loves and easy symbolism, right? <laughs> but here Jesus is hungry and tired and then faced with the same sort of temptation Adam and Eve faced. Don't you want to be like God? Wouldn't you rather have easy answers, easy power, wouldn't you like things to be certain in this wilderness that God has sent you to? I would confess I would be an easy target for this temptation, right? Yes, please. I will take all the bread you have and all the power. Okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs> and yet here Jesus shows us a different way. Jesus answers the devil's attempt to make scripture black and white by pointing out the complexity of scripture, right? You notice Satan tries to say, oh, the scriptures say this. And Jesus is like, okay, the scriptures say a lot of things. It also says this, right? <laughs> he refuses to put God in a box. Satan says, oh, God will totally do this thing. And Jesus says, I don't know. Testing God doesn't really work out all that great, right? He rejects the kind of power that would yield kingdoms and wealth sure that the voice he would rather listen to is one that doesn't offer such things so easily. I believe he's able to do that because he has taken those 40 days to sit in the wilderness, to seek, to question, to wrestle, to see the beauty of complexity, to get in tune with that part of him that is God incarnate and that is sees the infiniteness of the mystery of God and knows that there is no easy answer. The wilderness has allowed the wonderings and the questionings of Jesus's heart to come to a place, not of certainty, but of comfort in the uncertainty. Where temptation cannot take hold with its illusion of safety and power and wisdom. It is precisely because Jesus knows that there is no one answer that he can easily reject the devil's false ones. The line from Spencer's song that Wiley sang for us, and we'll be singing all through Lent, um, that just like is stuck in my head because it's catchy and beautiful, like everything Spencer touches. But um, the line is this, Coax your quiet questionings. Speak your soft uncertainties. There is room for these in the land of the seeking. That's what we're hoping to create in this season. A place where you don't have to have the answer, or even an answer. But a place where we can give voice to our questions and doubts and uncertainties because we think maybe they might reveal something of God, something we wouldn't engage with otherwise if we didn't ask the question. 
So part of our communal Lenten practice together um, is we are going to listen to those questions with all of us. Each week, uh, like today, you'll have a post-it in your song sheet. It's very fancy. We have, uh, thanks to Chloe, we have fancy textured ones this week. Ooh. Um, so what I invite you to do is throughout the service each week, um, write a question that's on your heart. It might be one that comes up from the scripture reading or the sermon or another part of the service. It might be a question you encounter throughout the week. It might be a question that you have held on to for a very, very long time that you finally just need to speak and put out there. Write it down. If Zoomies, if you write your questions in the chat, we'll write them down on a post-it for you. Um, and then uh, bring it with you just your post-it, bring it with you as you come forward for communion. Um, and over here on the short side, as we make our circle, you'll receive your communion, receive those promises of God's presence. You'll come over here. We have a wonder wall. You can cue Oasis, right? Um, it's a place uh, where we will hold all of the quiet questionings, all of the soft uncertainties, so perhaps that the truths and promises that they hold might speak more loudly in this moment and um, we can listen to them more clearly. Who will you listen to? It probably shouldn't be the voices shouting easy answers. So let's together take this season to practice silence, to practice doubt, to practice complexity so that we might hear the still small voice of God speaking through all the rest. Amen. As Wiley comes up, we have crayons if you need a writing utensil. Um, I don't know, Chloe, do we have extra post-its for people who came in late?